well over the years here on the Morning Blend. We have loved being able to get legal advice from our friend, Catherine Stone. And today we're gonna throw one at her. And I know that she has seen a lot of different areas when it comes to her legal practice, specifically workers' compensation. This is a different take. We're taking a little bit from the uh, headlines today. Right. Aren't we, Catherine? First, how are you? It's good to see good, you again. Good. How are you? I am well. So, yeah, Catherine, I mean, we're talking a lot about COVID mandates. Don't worry, we're not going to get political on this. No. However, there are some things that do need to be discussed when it comes to these new mandates and making sure that the employers are still protecting people with workers' compensation. Right. So we are obviously getting a lot of calls, um, people wanting to know my employer's mandating that I get the COVID vaccine, um, you know, what happens. Um, and but for purposes of a workers' compensation case, if someone's employer were to mandate that they have the vaccine or that they show proof of the vaccine and then that employee gets the vaccine and has an allergic reaction to that vaccine um, and ultimately loses time from work or incurs medical bills. I would argue that they are then must go under workers' compensation and that the employer's workers, um, workers' compensation carrier would need to pick up and pay potentially for any lost wages or medical treatment that can be connected to that adverse reaction. And so although it's not very clear at this point that in fact workers' compensation will be responsible for it, um, it certainly, in my opinion, should fall under the realm of workers' compensation. You know, I think I've briefly talked before about, well, what if I contract COVID from my job and there was an executive mandate that has since expired in the state of Florida that said if you were a government or state employee and um, worked uh, you know, in, in certain capacities that you were automatically deemed that your COVID uh, diagnosis was related to work, such as law enforcement um, and, and individual, certain other individuals that were classified under that executive order. That executive order has expired to the best of my knowledge. Um, and so then we have to, in order for it to be compensable under the work comp statute, you have to go through the occupational exposure portion of the statute, which is very difficult to prove. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about someone who as an employee was required to get the vaccine and you know, had an adverse reaction to the vaccine and whether or not if there's any wage loss that results from it, do you meet the, the qualifications for lost wage pay, which is called indemnity, temporary partial, temporary total disability benefits? And you know, are they maybe responsible for subsequent medical bills as it relates to that? You know, Catherine, I think we've done these segments now a few years, like I said in the beginning, and rarely have I heard you say things like, in your opinion, because it's always ever changing. And that's really the world we live in with all of this now. And so I want to, though, have people know your experience, which what you deal with mostly is workers' compensation. But right. what are those things that takes you to the conclusion that you feel like it could be, it should be filed under workers' compensation? Because really, again, it just shows your experience on this one. Right. Well, it, for instance, if you have a company that mandates that you go to a softball game or a baseball game, and, you know, oftentimes employers will sponsor an event and they make it mandatory that an employee go to such an event. Anytime something's required uh, to maintain your job, then and if you get injured as a result of that, then it, it should be covered under workers' compensation. And we have seen that many times. Is it a company event where you were required to attend? Um, and if you got hurt at that event, then yes, it would be a compensable workers' comp claim. So I'm using that same theory mm -hmm. um, that I've seen in the past as to why it should also apply to reactions to a, a employer mandated vaccine. Mm -hmm. And another thing, you know, that we just appreciate about you is you stay up to date on what is happening on a state level, on a federal level. And I think if people do get in touch with you, some things like this is ever changing and you're going to be the one that's going to be able to guide them. Right. It's ever changing. And um, you know, there's there's a lot of appeals up right now regarding COVID. 
neighborhood and workers' compensation. And, you know, what I say today may not be what the rule of law is tomorrow, but we at least know from prior experience how certain things should fall underneath the workers' comp. Uh, statute. And again, just to know that we, a uh, consumer and employee, if you will, just doesn't have to worry about that and stay up to date. You can rely on someone like Catherine and her team. And of course, we want to be sure, share the website, injuryfloridalawfirm.com. Catherine, you are always a, uh, a wealth of knowledge. You get us thinking for different topics and of course, bringing in something from the headlines that you're getting phone calls for. We appreciate you being with us today. 